Welcome to the fifth video in the Getting Started with Analyst Notebook series. This video will show the importing of one of the example import files using a newly created import specification. We will import the example one text file, which can be found using the example material shortcut discussed in the previous video, or from the import specifications folder if the examples are installed. This was also covered in the last video. In the Alice Notebook Import menu, on the Home tab, select the Import from File option. Select the Example 1 text file and click Open. The software will suggest existing specifications that have been configured for this file, but we will choose to create a new specification instead. The next page shows the data within the Example text file. The default setting for the column separator in the data is correctly set. Depending on your source data file, you may need to change the column separator for the columns to be correctly detected. We will try changing the column separators to see the effect. Here is the data if comma is used as a separator. The columns are obviously not correctly interpreted, so I'll set it back to tab for now. After clicking next, we can choose which row in the data defines the column headers. We don't want to import this row as it does not contain data but it will help us to identify the columns later on. We may also choose to exclude certain rows. In this case, we'll exclude any which begin with the percentage character. You can also choose to exclude certain rows by selecting them and clicking the Exclude Selected Rows button. The next screen allows the transformation of imported data, for example, by adding prefixes to a column of data or combining two columns. For this example, we don't need any transformations, so we'll just proceed to the next screen. Analyst Notebook provides several predefined import designs. Depending on the data and the required chart, you may be able to use one of these to simplify import creation, or you can just define the design yourself. For this example, which just contains simple telephone data, we can use the network of telephone calls design. Here we can see the pre-built design. If we select the left telephone, we can then drag the number column into the identity property of the telephone entity. Remember that the identity should uniquely identify the entity. In this case, a telephone number is sufficient by itself, but for larger data sets, it may be necessary to combine fields to gain a suitably unique identity. For the second telephone entity, we use the destination number as the identity. Note that the import design controls how each row of data in the source file is imported into the chart, so it is important that the identities identify each entity uniquely to avoid duplicate telephones on the chart. Please watch the Identity and Labels video if you need a refresher on this. Now let's set up the link representation. I'm going to set the multiplicity of the connection to multiple, where each connection and its direction are shown on the chart. Alternatives are directed, where all connections are summarized based on direction, and single, where all connections are summarized as a single link. For this type of link representation, the number of occurrences is not useful as a label as each link will represent a single call. Instead, let's label with the link type. Direction is set as source to destination, which means the link direction is set as icon one to icon two for each row of data in the source information. I will send the information from the date and time columns in my source data to the specific analyst notebook date and time properties, which will allow them to be used for analytical purposes. On the next screen, we need to set the date format so that Analyst Notebook can understand the information. There are a number of predefined patterns. If you cannot find one that matches, then select the closest and modify to suit your data. This predefined format is fairly close, so I'll amend it until it matches my data source. Once set, the exclamation warnings are cleared. On the next screen, we can set whether we want to create a new chart or add to the existing one, and which chart layout we want to be applied to the chart when it's created. In addition, we can add metadata for the import specification to provide additional guidance when reusing this specification later. When you first run an import or make changes to an existing import specification, Analyst Notebook will prompt you to save the specification. The completed chart is now displayed. Each call between each telephone is displayed along with its direction. Note that this chart is slightly different to the example one chart provided with the sample materials, as we use different settings during the import. 
As we wrote the date and times to the link properties, we can also transform this chart to a different view. From the Analyze menu, use the Copy to New Timeline chart function. The resulting chart now shows the telephone calls chronologically. In summary, we've imported the Example 1 text file and shown how to change the column separator if required, how to select which rows are to be imported, as well as how the data from the source file is transformed into the chart structure. We've seen the results on the completed chart and how the data can be represented differently for analysis purposes. Please look out for the next video in the series and thank you very much for your time.